Jesus won't beg the devil to let you go. He will just command him and you are gone. So I see God getting the devil off your life today. John chapter 11. Looking again at the efficacy of his prayer ministry. John chapter 11. We saw what happened. When Jesus appeared at the place where Lazarus was buried. Verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto him, verse 21, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, verse 22 together, everybody, let's read now. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou ask of God, God will give it to thee. Lazarus is dead, but I know that even now, I don't know how dead your situation may be like. Martha said that I know that even now, it looked like a close case, but I know that even now, it looks like there is no way out anymore, but I know that even now, whatsoever you ask the Father, he will give it to thee. I know that even now, he must have discussed with them on the efficacy of his prayer ministry that the Father can't turn him down. They have sat down in his meeting time and again. They have seen him pray and God answering on the spot. So Martha said, I know that even now, I'm glad to let you know it is not too late. Everybody thought it is late. But when Jesus steps in, because he's the God of times and seasons, he does whatever he pleases. I know that even now, whatever you ask the Father, he will do it for you. My brother had died, but I know even now, I know that even now, the efficacy of your prayer ministry is enough to turn the situation around. And I'm glad to let you know, God is turning your situation supernaturally around this morning through the efficacy of the prayer ministry of Jesus. I know that even now, I know that even now, I know that even now. A, a little boy was brought here this morning, victim of SS. The father said he was speaking AA into his life. I welcome AA into this boy. I welcome AA into this boy. And he had to see this morning with a report. SS converted to AA. No matter how close the enemy has set your case to be, God is reopening it up in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. God is reopening it in your favor this morning. Same chapter 11 of John, and I read from verse 40. Now let's start from verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Whatever seemed to have made you believe that your case is closed. John 11:39. Take ye away the stone. Now Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto, unto, unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Everybody thinks that you are stinking, that your case is smelly, that there is no future in your matter. <laughs> Even your sister said so. The sister of him that was dead said, Look, even though it's my brother, he's already smelling. Master, leave the matter alone. Everybody says you are smelling, that your case cannot be reverted. 
that the turning point is not your portion. But I'm glad to let you know something is happening to you this morning. Jesus said unto her, verse 40, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? How many want to see the glory of God? Come on, let me see your hand. You will no more see shame in your life. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Amen. He has a failure-proof prayer ministry. And I know that thou hearest me always. I know that thou hearest me always. I know that there is no time I pray without an answer. I know you hear me always on all matters. Always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he has thus spoken, he cried out with a loud voice. What? Lazarus, come forth. You are coming forth this morning. He was smelling just a few minutes ago. And he rose to become the envy of the entire community. Everyone who thinks that your case is closed will soon see you become the envy of the community. Just in a moment, a turning point enforced on the prayer altar of Christ as Jesus stood in the gap for Lazarus. He turned his thinking case to a shining testimony. Lazarus became what everybody wanted to see. Lazarus, Lazarus, the only one in the history of mankind that came forth after four days. As documented here. He became a spectacle to the entire world. The prayer altar of Christ will affect your dramatic turning point this year. So I'd like you to know that we are not just talking about biblical dogma we are bringing to you what will help you experience God's eternal plan and purpose for your life what he's saying is this Jesus has a prayer ministry for you and I and all we need to do is to engage his prayer ministry to effect our long awaited desires Lord Jesus stand in the gap for me today Lord Jesus, I engage your prayer ministry in my favor today. Lord Jesus, stand for me on this matter today. For he is able to save unto the uttermost those who come unto God by him. Those who come engaging his prayer ministry, saying he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. You have prayed, others have prayed for you, but let Jesus pray for you now. Would you let him pray for you now? Let him pray for you now. When Jesus stands up for you, the road must give way. Satan must clear the way. Remember the story of that young witch that I met in 1979? And this young witch said, when we sense a higher power on the way, we clear up the highway. And all powers in heaven and on earth have been given to Jesus. So nothing can stand on his way. So when Jesus stands in the gap for you, every obstacle gives way without being pushed. I see every obstacle giving way to you now. I see every obstacle giving way to you now. I told you the story before. I just finished reading some materials on Smith Wigglesworth in 1979. And one of my senior brothers sent me to go and represent him in a meeting to speak to those students. And I went there, was, I was intoxicated with my supremacy over the devil. And after preaching, I asked this young student, I said, 
How many of you are witches here? And I said, stand to your feet. Quite a large number stood up to their feet. I said, hey, sit down first. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm not saying that somebody said you are a witch. I'm saying that you know that you are a witch. I'm not asking whether you ate in the night. If you are hungry the only day, you may eat in the night. I'm saying that you know that you know that you are a witch. Stand to your feet. And a large number stood up. And I called one of them and said, come on here. Tell me what do you do with the devil? And she said, anytime we, are, we want to suck blood, we get on the highways. And we cause anybody who come into some assault. And we suck the blood of the victims. And without hesitation, I said, what of when people like us are coming? He said, when we sense a higher power on the way, we clear off the highway. Now, now listen, listen. That was little, tiny me. Imagine Jesus coming on the way. And then tell me what witch will be there to suck your blood. So every trap set for you, the one who set it falls into it today. Every trap set for you, the one set that set it goes into it in your place today. Because we are talking about the highest power. For all powers in heaven and on earth has been given unto him. The father judges no man. He has committed all judgment on his son. And when the judge is standing in your favor, the case is decided in your favor already. So today, you are going free. Today, you are going free. Lord God of heaven, I'm engaging the prayer ministry of Jesus on this matter today. Jesus, stand up to my help. Jesus, stand in the gap for me. Jesus, stand in prayer for me today. Jesus, pray me out of this predicament today. Jesus, bring me out of this pit where there is no water today. Jesus, you prayed for Peter. He came out. Pray for me today. I want to come out. Stand in prayer for me today. It's time for me to overcome. That's what makes it happen. That is the ultimate prayer altar. If Jesus prays for you and there is no answer, forget about an army of praying warriors. Jesus is the ultimate. The Father hears him always. 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 Even if a matter has been closed four days and you're already in the grave and the stone is rolled against you, the Father hears him always. The Father hears him always. The Father hears him always. And it's that Jesus is praying for you today. Can I hear your amen? amen? Just like if you are arrested and you need someone to stand bail for you, you make a call, isn't it? You say, they should know I'm here. They won't know you are there. You make a call. So it's time to make a call to Jesus. Jesus, I have been shown your failure-proof prayer altar this morning. Stand for me. Stand for my help. Stand for my help. You know, in Psalm 121, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. If help can't come through God, it won't come through anywhere else. Jesus Christ, I need this help and I need it now. And that help will come for you. Can I hear your Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? So when you look at the case of Peter and look at the case of Lazarus, you understand the efficacy of the prayer ministry of Jesus. You look at the case of Peter, you look at the case of Lazarus, and you understand the efficacy of the prayer ministry of Jesus. Why do we need to engage his prayer ministry? Why? Very simple. We can pray amiss. In James chapter 4 verse 3, he said, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. For he can pray amiss. He knows what is in the mind of the spirit. For he makes intercession for us according to the will of God. According to the will of God. We need this prayer ministry because he knows what is in the mind of the spirit. 
We don't know what we should pray. Most of us know that we have challenges. We don't know the source of the challenges. But he knows all things. Before him, all things lay bare. He knew who are, who are responsible. He knew where they have tied it up together. That's why we need to engage this prayer ministry. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But he who knows the mind of the spirit is the one making intercession for us. He, he, he intercedes for us according to the will of God. So we engage his prayer ministry because he knows what the root cause of your challenge is. He knows the forces that are arrayed against you. He knows that even the ones who call your confidence, they are your worst enemies. He knows. So we engage his prayer ministry because he cannot pray amiss. He prays according to the will of God because he knows what is in the mind of the spirit. He knows the secret deep depth of every issue. You may know what is wrong, but you may not know what makes it to go wrong. So he stands there for you because he knows all things. And before him, all things lay bare. And he makes intercession for us according to the will of God. And you know what the word says? If we ask anything according to his will, he does what? He hears us. First John 5, 14. He hears us. He hears when we ask according to his will, he hears us. So Jesus always intercedes according to the will of God. And so God hears him always. God hears him always. God hears him always. God hears him always. So we engage his prayer ministry because he cannot pray amiss. He cannot pray amiss. I read from Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Who shall lay any charge, anything to the charge of God's elect? Verse 33. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Is there making intercession for us? Is there making intercession for us? And because he's also our judge, today it will avenge you speedily. Yeah. I said today it will avenge you speedily. Yeah. Today it will avenge you speedily. Yeah. Today it will avenge you speedily. Yeah. Today he will avenge you speedily. Today he will avenge you speedily. Today he will avenge you speedily. Verse 26 of the same Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. For, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, listen. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. You know, there are two personalities here. He's talking about he that searches the heart. And God said, I alone search the heart. And I try the reins. And Jesus said, whoever has seen the father has seen me. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. I am my father. We are one. He that searcheth. Or let's say, and Jesus that searcheth the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession for us according to the will of God. So his prayer can never return void. When you engage his prayer ministry, your victory is eternally established. I see you overcoming that challenge today. That's why we engage his prayer ministry. That's why we engage his prayer ministry. The father hears him always. Because he prays always according to the will of God. 
He prays always for us according to the will of God. Lord Jesus, I'm trusting my destiny, my life into your praying hands today. Pray me out of every pit that the enemy has dug for me. Pray me out of every pit of shame and reproach that the enemy has programmed for my life. Pray me into my turning point the way you did for Lazarus. Open a new chapter in my life. Turn every pity of my life into envy. Turn every shame into shining testimony. Rise up to my help today. And he will do that. If you ever come across a man that Jesus is praying for, be careful with him. Because you can't beat him. You can't beat him. You can't beat him. Satan came in person. He couldn't get Peter. Because his life was in the praying hands of Jesus. Everybody has prayed. Now let the master pray. Now let the master what? Pray. You know what Jesus said? After Mary said, I know that even now, whatever you ask the Father, I will give it to thee. Jesus said, thy brother shall live again. Thy brother shall live again. Everybody who thought your case is over, I'm glad to let you know, you will live again. Come and show us where is your husband. You will live again. Where are your children you have been talking about? They will see it again. Yeah. Whatever they thought we would never see, it will come alive again. Yeah. Whatever they thought is gone forever, it will come alive again. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen if you are there? Yeah. He said, thy brother shall live again. Because you believe in the efficacy of my prayer ministry, your brother will live again. Because you believe that when I ask the father anything, he will give it to me. Your brother will live again. I'm glad to let you know that situation will come alive again. Yeah. As you are praying this prayer, every damage in your physical body, I see Jesus calling it back to life. Yeah. Lazarus did not just have headache, stomachache, Cancer, leukemia, he had death. Jesus prayed them out of stinking death. Prayed them out of stinking death. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And I know that you hear me always. I know that you hear me always. Lazarus, come forth. I have talked to the Father about you. And he that was dead came forth. And he said, lose him and let him go. Somebody is going free now. 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 Somebody is going free today. 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 In the name of Jesus. The prayer ministry of Jesus is the hiding place of my life. I have trusted my entire life, family and ministry into his praying hands. So I don't only feel secure. I know I am secure. Because he, is, he can't miss it in prayer. His prayer ministry is efficacious. His prayer can bounce back to him. And I don't know what that situation is where everybody has prayed for you. Your pastor has prayed for you. Your bishop has prayed for you. And it looks like the same. Now let's get back to the high priest. Whoever liveth to make intercession for us. And what a dramatic turnaround this morning. Can I hear your amen? amen? He makes intercession for the saints. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to the will of God. In closing this teaching, I'd like to show you how to engage his prayer ministry. 
is there for you? Or how do you engage his prayer ministry? How do you engage his prayer ministry? How do you position yourself to enjoy his failure-proof prayer ministry? You know, he said, set yourself and you will see the salvation of your God. That is, position yourself to see your God in action. There's a way to position yourself to see your God in action. How many want to see their God in action this time? Amen, you will. Now, this, this is how to position yourself. Number one, love him. He that has my commandment and keepeth them is he that loveth me. He that loveth me will be loved of my father and I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. John chapter 14 verse 21. And I will manifest myself to him. Just keep loving him. Keep loving him. He will be right there 24 hours at your service. I will manifest myself to him. He that has my commandment and keepeth them is he that loves me. He that loves me will be loved of my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. You remember in Psalm 91 verse 14 because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's banking on my name. He has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. Chapter 91 of Psalms and verse 14. He has set his love upon me so I'm committed to his deliverance. How do you position yourself for his prayer ministry? Keep loving him. Not just in words but in truth and in deed. I will manifest myself to him. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. So when you are in love with him, you qualify for his 24-hour service, including his prayer ministry. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Can I hear your amen? amen? You love God. You love people. Psalm 41 and verse 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in sickness. You can provoke his prayer ministry through the love you have for people. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him. That means God will stand in the gap for him. To position yourself for his intercessory ministry by loving him and by loving the poor. Loving the needy. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? And then number three, you position yourself for his prayer ministry by praising him. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against their enemies. And they were all smitten, and not one of them escaped. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 to 24. Not one of them escaped. As they began to sing and to praise, so refuse to murmur in your hour of challenge. Be addicted to his praise. And you qualify for his intercessions and his interventions. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? amen? And finally, refuse to be anxious. Refuse to be what? Anxious. Be anxious for nothing. He said, be still and you will know that I'm God. 
The Lord will fight for you when you hold your peace. So refuse to be anxious. Trust your life into his prayer hands and relax. In the midst of the storm, it takes over the battle and it levels your positions. This is how to position yourself for his intervention. I engage your prayer ministry for my desired victory. Level out your positions. Bring me to my possessions. And he will do it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? This is the ultimate prayer altar. Whatever does not happen on this altar, the prayer altar of Jesus is closed. Mary said, I know. Even now, that is already thinking, ask the Father, I will give it to thee. And Jesus said, thy brother will live again. 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 God is turning somebody's morning into dancing today. If you are that individual, let me hear your loudest amen. God is turning somebody's morning into dancing today. God is converting somebody's sorrow into laughter today. God is turning someone's trial into testimony today. If you are that one, let me hear your believing. Amen. Satan said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Oh, Jesus, I know who thou art. Have you come to destroy before the time? Jesus does not only have power to deliver, he has power to destroy the opposition. That's why you must take this moment very serious. Your turning point moment. This is your turning point moment. That your son, God is rescuing him today. That point of mockery in your Christian life, God is turning to a testimony today. Somebody the world has thought would never carry a child. Your desired set of twins is arriving today. Somebody in this service is meeting her husband this week. Somebody is meeting his wife this week. is taking place for someone this week. That age-long battle is turning to a testimony this week. Because you are engaging the failure-proof prayer altar of Christ. You are engaging the failure-proof prayer altar of Christ. You are engaging the failure-proof prayer altar of Christ. The prayer altar of Christ is a failure-proof prayer altar. God hears him always. Because he prays always according to the will of God for the saints. If he had them concerning Peter. Because he hears him always. He will hear him in your case. Because he hears him always. He will hear him in your case. Because he hears him always. He will hear him in your case. I'd like you to consciously, not emotionally. Engage the prayer ministry of Christ for the specific areas of challenge in your life. Jesus, I've prayed. Others have stood in the gap for me. But I know you are the ultimate in the school of prayer. Your prayer altar is the ultimate prayer altar. And for my help today. Stand for my help today. Stand in the gap for me today on this issue. Stand for my help. Stand for my help today. Stand for my help today. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. He said, have I not said unto you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? 
If you believe in the efficacy of my prayer ministry, Jesus said, you will see the glory of God. So this week you will not see shame. I said this week, all through this week, you will never see shame. All through this year, you will never see shame. You will only see glory. You will only see beauty. You will only see blessings. In the name of Jesus. That matter you have placed into his praying hands today. You will return with it as a testimony next Sunday. He prayed Lazarus out of the grave. When he stands in the gap for a man. The man is bound to cross over. So you are crossing over that obstacle today. In the name of Jesus. 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 That matter you are placed into his praying hands. You are returning with it as a testimony this coming Sunday. That matter the enemy thought is closed. God is reopened it for you in your favor this week. That stagnation of your life is terminated today. That frustration is turned into a celebration today. That trial you are placed in his hand is turned to a testimony today. Can I hear your believing amen? It is done. It is done. If you believe it is done, lift up your hands and give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. For praying for me today, for standing the gap for me today, for praying me out of the pit of shame and reproach, for praying me into realms of glory and beauty. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Someone said this morning that they say, When you come to win us, everything work. Now that you are in winners, everything from today begins to work in your favor. Now that you have joined the winning army, you are never going to be counted as a loser anywhere in your life again. Because he has prayed for you. What the doctor said was wrong with you this last week, they won't find it there this coming week. Because he has prayed for you. That business that looks down last week is up and alive this week. Because he has prayed for you. The harassment of last week is turned to a testimony this week. This shouldn't stop here. Every issue of your life, you can put it into his praying hands and go to rest. And watch what he does with it. Lift up those two hands and begin to declare what you look forward to this week. This is declared a week of wonders for me. A week of testimonies. A week of glory. A week of beauty. Everything is working for me this week. Everything is working for my family this week. In Jesus' precious name. Everyone in this service that is not born again, this is your chance. If you are not saved, you are not safe. Salvation is the security of your destiny. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith.